The Pi 5 has arrived. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Let's get this Pi 5 opened and explorated. All right, Andy did the right thing. He got a Pi 5. This is the four gig model and he got the active cooler. I highly recommend you get the active cooler. This thing runs a lot hotter than a Pi 4, which was already hotter than a Pi 3. You can see the trend going. And you can tell right away because the power supply that they recommend is 27 watts. So that's 27 watts of heat in is 27 watts of heat out somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. Let's take a look at this thing. This is a USB-C PD. So it puts out 5.1 volts, 5 amps, 9 volts, 3 amps, 12 volts, 2.25 amps. You could run a QRP radio off of this thing. 15 volts, 1.8 amps, and it is a US plug. It's surprising how much you can say about a little power supply like that. It comes with a couple of pieces of paper inside. A lot of it basically says, don't eat this. Okay. But one of the things that is important to note is this product should not be overclocked. That's a big one. It is designed for reliable operation at room temperature. Don't expose it to a xenon flash or laser. I don't know why I would do that, but I'm not in all the environments this thing will go in. This is the fan module outside of the box. I actually like it, it's pretty neat. It has an aluminum heat sink with an aluminum base and then it has the heat sink pads already attached to it where they need to go. And realistically, it goes onto the Pi 5 only one way and that is like that. And then there is a power connector up here to plug the fan in. That power connector is blocked just from the factory, but it does say, fan right next to it on the silk screen. And it looks like it's covering the Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip, the main processor, and the way this thing is configured, I'm assuming that is a voltage regulator for all the different voltages going on. It has these little push button connectors that go through holes that are pre-drilled into the board. And that's how it looks installed. Taking a real close look at the fan, you can see that it's closed off on the visible sides here, here, and here, but it's actually hard to tell and you're never gonna be able to see it on camera, but this side here facing the heatsink is open, which is what I would have expected. Good job. Plugging in the Pi 4, and we've got a wireless connection and a little pop-up there, that's nice. Let's get this thing updated and upgraded. We are all done with updates. I have a couple more applications to install, but what I was looking for showed up on the screen. There is a kernel update. Kernel updates could, possibly, could include performance increases in disk I.O. And one of the things that the Pi 5 has over the Pi 4 is a faster SD card slot, which is the whole reason why we're doing this exercise with the Pi 4 in the first place. Oh my, <laughs> gotta zoom way in to get this thing to be seen by you folks at home. There's a program I use all the time called NeoFetch, and a lot of other people use it as well, and it shows you what your hardware is inside. So you can see this is running Bookworm. It is a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B Revision 1.4, and this is the 8 gig model, currently running at 1.8 gigahertz. 1.8 gigahertz. So now we got to run Sysbench to figure out what our performance is. And I'm going to do this again on the Pi 5, and the only performance metric I'm gonna do on this one is disk score, and then I'll show you a table of all the other performance, because the rest of the performance shouldn't change from Pi 4 to Pi 4 when you change the SD card. But you guys all know that. All right, we are making up 16 gigabytes worth of files to test. I'll be back when that's done. Making 128 files took 20 minutes and six seconds. That's not the benchmark, that's just writing the files to make the benchmark possible to be made. Let's go do the benchmark. This is the Pi 4's test results on the file IO. We have 277.32 reads per second, 184.88 writes per second, 597.70 f-syncs per second. We get a read throughput of 4.33 megabytes per second and a write throughput of 2.89 megabytes per second. Now I am plugging in the Pi 4, Pi 4. <laughs> All right, now I'm plugging in the Pi 5 for the first time. This is the exact same SD card as was in the Pi 4 for reasons. The fan is a variable speed fan. That's good to know. So right now it's currently off. It's spun up to prove that it works. Oh, that was a fast boot. And went back to sleep. Excellent. I like it. Ambient temperature in here is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So good to know. Oh, that launched fast. You can already see that it's faster. You can already feel it. All right, let's run Neo Fetch. See what a Pi 5 looks like. Raspberry Pi 5 Model B Rev 1.0. It has four gigs of RAM. It's running at 2.4 gigahertz. And since we're on the same SD card, we should be able to run the up arrow to get to our file IO test. And it took 10 seconds last time. How long is it gonna take here? 
All right, this is the Pi 5 and the test on disk performance has completed. We have 292.23 reads per second, 194.78 writes per second, 624.25 f-syncs per second, and read of 4.57 megabytes per second, and write of 3.04 megabytes per second. Definitely faster than the Pi 4. This test was conducted using the exact same SD card to rule out that it was the SD card as an issue. The Pi 4 should have had an advantage with 8 gigabytes of RAM compared to the Pi 5's 4 gigabytes of RAM, but the Pi 5 was still able to get some more performance out of it. Overall, win for the Pi 5. Let's do some more testing. And the numbers are in. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is currently the performance winner. We've got a uh, CPU of 10386 beating the previous winner, the Rock 5A, also from Andy. Thank you, Andy. The uh, Rock 5A had 9526. The Pi 4, the Pi 4 versus the Pi 5 is probably the comparison most people are looking for. 7016. So quite a big jump from 7016 to 10386. Memory performance also went up. Again, the Pi 5 is the winner. The Pi 4 was 2456019, and the Pi 5 is 37007214. And then we already talked about the disk numbers. They are there on the screen for you. You can kind of see how these things stack up and how the evolution has gone. The Innovato Quadra is currently 3349. I've done some videos on the Quadra as well on this channel, and there is a couple of really interesting things in the ham space going on with the Quadra. So you might want to take a peek at that anyway. Fairly low price, bundled with a bunch of ham apps, even ham clock with a display bundled in as well. So I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. I'm pretty impressed with the Pi 5 so far. Got some more testing to do. One of the things that I do on the Pi 4 is watch YouTube videos, and I usually watch them at 720p at 2x speed and the Pi 4 can do this but it stutters a little bit at the very beginning of the video until it gets its buffers full and then it can play so let's take a look and see how the Pi 5 performs with this. Balfangs come in all sorts of boxes this one is the blue and white box. Fuji Jan, this Balfang is normal speed let's stop it and let's change this over to 2x speed already at 720p 60. I'm going to do 1080p 60 and I'm going to switch videos so it has to start from scratch. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Balfang is at it again with the new... A little bit stuttering, not bad awesome. though. Another radio from Balfang under $30. Let's go take a look. The moment we've all been waiting for, this is the new Balfang UV17R with an FCC ID of 2AJGM-UV17. For those of you that are playing okay, at it's home, doing the thing. Game, it's doing the thing. We get in here. But that's 1080p 60 versus 720p 60. 720p 60 always stuttered, and this was 1080p 60 that stuttered. Let's do 720p 60, and again, pick another video. Balfangs come in all sorts of boxes. This one is the blue and white box. Fujijan Balfang Electronics Company Limited from China. And this is the UV5R Plus with an FCC ID. I'm not seeing any stuttering on 720p60. That's good. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to take a look at... I like it. There are currently two models of the Raspberry Pi 5, the 4GB model and the 8GB model. If I was getting one of these myself, the 4GB model is 129 The 8GB model is currently $20 more on Amazon. I would be getting the 8GB model because the RAM is hardwired onto the board. So it will be quite difficult to add more RAM in the future versus just getting it now for an extra 20 bucks, And then you'll have a bigger, faster, more capable Pi for a lot longer usage in your life, which is good things. Another great resource for finding a Raspberry Pi is the RPi Locator, and I forget what the extension is, rpilocator.com. There you go. All right, and the first thing you want to do when you get to the RPi Locator is change your region to your personal region. Mine is United States, and then pick your devices and filter by Pi 5, and it's telling me that Adafruit doesn't have any in stock, but DigiKey has a couple of four gig models in stock for $60. So I would wait and not get them on Amazon, but I would get them at the store that indicates the best price for you and availability and the model that you want. Adafruit and DigiKey are both fantastic companies to deal with. One of the things I really enjoy about the Raspberry Pi is that they are making affordable single board computers, not necessarily the best powerful screaming PCs out there, but these things are affordable for use in schools and so forth and they run off of cheap power supplies that show up in the world. And the current rage in the ham world is to get with these 12 volt mini computers, these mini PCs that actually run on regular Intel processors and you can run Windows on them and everything. Those are fantastic also. I just have a kind of a soft spot in my heart for Raspberry Pis and I'll be getting a couple of these once they become available and I'm somewhere where I can actually get them in my hands because I'm moving all the time. If you don't know, I have an RV channel I'll link up at the top for you with all of my latest RV travel news and all the excitement of being a ham on the road. How many hams do you know that film with their refrigerator sitting right next to them? That's kind of the joys of a cramp lifestyle in an RV. I ham on and have a lot of fun doing it. There's a video right up here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.